Hi, this video is all about the ways we can find geological resources that are hidden from view using techniques that identify um, variations or anomalies in the geochemistry of some of the things that might come into contact with ore bodies, for, for example, water. There are several different methods that we can use geochemistry for to find valuable minerals. These are listed here. So we can analyze stream water, we can analyze stream sediment or soil, and finally we can um, undertake what's called a biogeochemical survey, looking at the uh, chemistry of vegetation. All of these methods have something in common. They're all searching for anomalies, searching for something that has uh, perhaps a, a trace element of the resource uh, we're exploring for, or perhaps um, a trace of uh, an associated element. Whatever it is, we're looking for something that stands out from the norm, something that is different from what we'd expect to find in water or, or sediment or soil from a particular area. That can help us focus our attention on a narrower area where the ore body might be located. If you look at stream water first, this is a fairly straightforward technique. It's one where lots of sediment, uh, lots of samples can be taken in a relatively short time, perhaps by uh, systematically sampling river water at one kilometer intervals across a whole drainage basin. These samples are then analyzed uh, to look for any minerals that may be dissolved uh, within that water. This can be mapped and that may help us narrow down the location of an ore body as this water passes over rocks containing the minerals that we're interested in. As well as the water from streams, we could also collect sediments. Sediments, of course, are the eroded uh, remnants of the rocks that the water's passed over. So if there are any um, valuable minerals there, they may well be incorporated into the sediment that we find in the river. This can be sampled perhaps even at the same time as stream water. And again, it will be analysed for anomalous traces, um, particularly of metals that we're searching for. The results of both of these surveys can be plotted on uh, a map. There's an example shown here on the screen. The larger the circles at each sample location, the greater the concentration uh, of metal. You can see this guides a geologist into a particular part of the strange basin where further study can identify the exact location of an ore body. So these techniques are all about narrowing down search areas, finding out where areas of interest may be located, and then applying further investigative techniques. This is um, an example from Britain of copper concentrations. You can see there are parts of Scotland with anomalously high copper concentrations, for example, uh, the Isles of Skye and uh, Mull and some of the other Inner Hebrides, Hebridean islands, the Midland Valley of Scotland, uh, so between Glasgow and Edinburgh. And you can see some areas as well that have a very low concentration, for example, the Highlands. This, again, focuses down uh, attention. If you're going to search for copper resources, clearly, uh, the Highlands of Scotland are not going to be worthy of much further study. The islands, however, may well be.
it could be a fairly low-tech way of searching and panning uh, the sediment that we find in, in rivers can concentrate some of the denser minerals. Gold ore or um, cassiterite, which is tin ore, will remain in the bottom of a, a pan, as will, as will other uh, dense minerals, uraninite, for example. But this can be done uh, relatively easily and cheaply. As well as river water, it's possible to look at the other uh, weathered and eroded fragments of bedrock that we can find in uh, soils. Drier areas, for example, may not have um, much in the way of a stream to sample. Again, a systematic sample uh, will be taken across an area, perhaps on a grid or a transect, um, across a zone of interest, collecting soil samples on the way and analysing those for their trace element composition. All the time looking for these anomalies, looking for concentrations that don't fit. There can be several different ways in which um, these minerals will be uh, dispersed across an area, depending on the geology of the particular site. But all of these, if we follow the concentration back towards where the concentration is highest, will lead us to the ore body we're searching for. The pattern of distribution can also indicate um, where the ore body is. Remember, all of this is just identifying places to drill. The only way you're going to really understand an ore body is to either dig or to drill into it to find what's there, what minerals are there, what grade of uh, ore it is, what type of ore body it is and all the other information you'd need to further develop the results. This information can be plotted on a map, like this isoline map of copper concentrations. You can see how um, the samples were taken along these uh, lines of section at 10 meter intervals. So we get a really detailed picture of where this ore body may be. There are various different techniques then that can be used to analyze the samples that are taken either from soil or from uh, stream water or stream sediment. We don't need to worry too much about these. You're far more likely to be shown the results of these uh, tests than asked about how they're actually operating. Our final technique is a biogeochemical survey. This is where vegetation is sampled, looking again for anomalous concentration of minerals that may be drawn up into, the, uh, into particularly into trees from the soil and the bedrock beneath. If we get high levels of metal, it can indicate we've got uh, an ore body beneath the tree. It's particularly useful for example, in places like Australia, where eucalyptus trees um, will draw uh, water and dissolve minerals from, uh, from depth underneath the soil uh, and bring them to the surface for us to sample. Even gold has been found um, this way. This diagram shows how, again, by following the concentrations back towards their highest point, we can find the location of an ore body. So, to conclude, geochemical sampling is 
a very good way of finding particular resources. Metals especially uh, will leave a trace behind um, in water that passes across them or soil that's weathered from them. By careful sampling and an organised and systematic pattern of sampling, it's possible to narrow down an area where an ore body may be found. So, don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it along to class. I'll see you then.